Good afternoon. If you are registered for the IEC 61439-1 and IEC 61439-2 overview series of webinar, you are in the right place. My name is Patrick Yeo and I'm the ASEAN Sales Manager for UL Energy, Power Technology, also known as EPT for ASEAN Region, and I will be your moderator for today's webinar. I will also be present, assisting our presenter, Mr. Ragunan, also known as Ragu, with some parts of the webinar. I will first like to explain how this webinar will be conducted. You will be listening to the webinar using your computer speakers, you may submit questions at any time during the presentation by typing your questions in the chat panel on the bottom left of the screen and hitting send. We will answer as many questions as time permits. If you do not get to your questions, we will follow up with you. Additionally, the webinar is being recorded and a link was sent up in an email. Today's webinar focuses on IEC 61439-1 and IEC 61439-2 overview, power switch gear and control gear assemblies. These two standards play an important role in, you, in the services UR provides for evaluating and certifying low voltage switch gear. Now, I would like to introduce our presenter, Mr. Ragu, Engineering Leader for Middle East and North Africa region. Ragu has 30 years of experience handling international certifications for electrical products and is our Engineering Leader for UL Middle East and North Africa region, based in Dubai. His past experiences including working with CFA International, Intertech and TUV Ryland in various leadership positions. He is well established in global certification requirements and is leading UL with testing and reviewing work for IEC 61439 requirements. Now, I will turn the presentation and webinar over to Ragu. Ragu, please take over. Thank you, Patrick. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all the participants for this series of webinar. I am honored to be a presenter for this webinar series. Guys, you have attended many seminars and webinars till date based on IEC 61439-192. Like you, about 30 years back, I also attended more than 100 of seminars and webinars based on IEC 61439. Always like you, I also felt one thing. At the time of seminars, we take beautiful good notes, correct? And we thought, now we know everything. After a week, if same sales or technical team comes to you and asks some clarifications, you get confused. What I lunch, what I need to refer, everything go into our mind where we are unable to answer correct why it is so like that because we never understand the concept of the product instead of the behind theory of the standard which is missing in new generation teaching this is why myself taken a different route to build a concept instead of standard so that you will never miss anything in your daily life. Can I tell you one good story here? If somebody give you a good book to you to read from first page to last page, maybe 20 to 30% of the summary, maybe you can gather. Instead of that, you watch a movie of two and a half hours after a month, after a year, if somebody asked about the movie, you will know from first to end every character. Why? Because it's a print media. It prints in your brain. Concept prints in your brain. 
you never forget because all the characters concept you compare to your life hence you never miss any single character this is the base from last 20 years i thought of explaining the concept which takes care of you means you understand better understanding of the switch board when you compare with your life once you understand the concept any changes in the standard or any changes in the design you can easily remember what to design what to test okay guys few minutes please forget iec standard switchboard today i am going to tell you a beautiful story which is which is going to be in your mind throughout this seminar okay let me speak now see in general i am comparing my switchboard is my family fantastic right let me understand this why we construct a home our home has to be safe enough for humans that is we and it is safe enough for the public and it is safe enough for the domestic animals same concept for the product also whatever product we develop it has to be safe for the humans who is operating that and it is safe for the public and it is safe for the domestic animal means every international standards basic aim is to ensure these three only safe to humans safe to public property safe to domestic animals hence every switchboard placed in the market must be safe and meet the relevant international safety standard forget now let me take you a different route now let me tell you the story switchboard you are seeing in the left side right side you are seeing a house switchboard is nothing but my home beautiful right let me drive this concept to into your brain so that you never forget switchboard in your lifetime let me take an example of our family our family consists of a normal assumption a father a mother and a kids assume you see this one as our family means family has a father assuming that he is the income for the family means he is a earning member for our family so i consider as a income for my house correct beautiful always father married to mother correct if you see the screen mother is available there always kids are delivered by mother never by father hence mother delivered kids z1 z2 z3 means in a house i also built in the picture father as a incomer means he is a income earner for the home mother who takes the income from the father and distribute to kids depending upon number of kids example in my presentation i mentioned z1 z2 z3 and i have a window door everything i built a home in a safe zone means my home is has, my home has to be safe enough with the requirement which is available in the environment correct so my home switchboard is also thing but home let me compare the same home to the switchboard now so don't forget these three important characters in your life we are going to play vital role in switchboard based on these characters only father mother kids we are playing total standard with these three characters correct let me take you to the next slide means the house that we constructed where father is the income of the family mother who takes care of the distributing of father's income and kids always get the feed from mother correct we also have a doors partitions windows in our home 
as per our requirement. Correct? So now let me convert this into a switchboard in place of father in nothing but our income and breaker. Correct? Maybe ACB, yes, circuit breaker, only circuit breaker, anything. In every switchboard has the income or like a father. Always main distribution board is our mother linked to father always. Don't forget this. And kids are always coming from mother. Means from main distribution only the kids are means feeders are going to come. Means kids are nothing but my feeders. Mother is nothing but my vertical or horizontal bus bar. Father is my income or breaker. Beautiful concept, right? Now, if anybody asks switchboard, you always keep remember. Yeah, I know. Father, mother, kids. Nothing but income or vertical horizontal bus bar. Kids, that is feeders. With this concept only, we are going to drive IEC 61439 standard, guys. Never forget this concept. Nobody can teach you in easy way. Let any standard changes, any new addition going to come. The concept of home never changes. Father never change, mother never change, kids never change. Same way, incomer never change, horizontal vertical bus are never change, feeders never change. Correct? This is a beautiful concept. Switch word is nothing but my home. Concept is now clear. Now move to the next slide. Now you see how I neatly compared. Father is nothing but income breaker. Mother is main horizontal bus bar. Kid one, kid two, kid three is nothing but feeder one, feeder two, feeder three. Instead of windows, I'm also having lowers. What changes in this? Everything, whatever in the house, we are going to build in our switchboard. Means our home nothing but our switchboard and concept is very much clear now. We are play around with these three components only. Don't forget this: income breaker, horizontal bus bar, and feeders are the three key members for our switchboard. We are going to drive total IEC standard. Clear? Now you see this just as a Reference in a, in, in a panel board, a switchboard, incomer, main bus bar, feeder one, feeder two, feeder three. Same concept, what I mentioned in the earlier slide. Clear now? Now we move here. See, house can be built with your own design. You can use your own material. Depending upon the family size, you, you, you are going changing your house. Maybe you are going to build a villa, I am going to build a studio, you are going to build a single bedroom house, depending upon your requirements. But every house has to be safe for the environment. Environment never get changed for all types of houses. Maybe you are in the hut or you are in the villa, the environment never get changed. Environment remains same. What is the environment? One is our house should be protected from dust. That is nothing but in IEC standard, we call it as ingress protection. Our house has to be protected by rain. Nothing but again ingress protection of IEC standard. My house has to be protected by heat. Nothing but temperature resistance in the IEC standard. It has to be free from electric shock. Nothing but I am going to do a dielectric test in our IEC standard. Any short circuit inside my home has to be protected. Hence, my switchboard also undergo short circuit test. And all my doors, hinges has to be mechanically constructed in line with the requirements. Same way, my switchboard also has to have a construction verification like mechanical operations or mechanical impact, insulating materials. Everything has to be constructed in line with constructional requirements of IEC 61439. What is the change in this? No change at all. Whatever we build a house, same concept we are going to develop for the 
switchboard IEC 61439-1 Annex shall be talk about design verification totally based on our home construction requirements only. There is no change at all. Now the concept is very much clear to you guys. Means my home, whatever the protection I'm going to make, same protection. IEC standard also rights for our switchboard. Now you are very much clear. Now I dip into next slide to move into construction part. Today, this webinar, I'm going to speak only on the construction part. See, even though we build a house, house has two parts. Now, first part is how to construct a home is very, very important. Second thing, after and start living in the home, how all the components inside, including us, performance. One is construction, part one, how it performs, part two. Same way, IC61439-1 also talks about two parts. One is constructional part, one is performance part. Today, in this webinar, I am going to touch only the constructional part of the webinar. Don't forget the basics I explained to you. Father, mother, kids, nothing but incomer, main and vertical bus bar, feeders. Throughout IEC standard, we are going to play only on these characters. Don't forget this. This basics is very, very important. Whenever anybody asks you to design a switchboard, just take home in your mind. You never forget what to write. What to, what to test, what not to test. Now it's very much clear, right? Now, see the comparison of an D of IEC 61439 construction part. As I mentioned to you, this webinar, I am going to cover only construction part. Other two webinars, we are discussing about the performance and the latest standard later. Now, in part A, in construction, Class number 10.2 talk about strength of materials and parts. What is that? Is the same applicable to home also. See, all materials used in the home has to be non-corrosive, correct? Non-flammable, have no UV radiations, have good mechanical impact, all covered under this class of switchboard. If you open switchboard standard also, which I'm going to explain further, under strength of materials, we talk about corrosion test, we talk about thermal stability test, we talk about UV test, we talk about mechanical impact test, we talk about lifting test, everything related to construction, that is strength of material parts. How we talk about home, same concept, we are going to discuss in strength of materials and parts. I think now you'll never get confused. If anybody asks strength of materials and parts, what it is, it is nothing but how my home also has to have non-corrosive, non-flammable, no UV, good mechanical impact, everything coming under strength of materials and parts. First, we need to build a home, I mean switchboard in strong way so that switchboard never get corrosive and what are the insulating material used inside the switchboard shouldn't have a flammable type of material. There is no material which can emit UV radiation or mechanical impact is very, very important. If somebody come and hit the, my home, wall may demolish, that is dangerous. Same way, when I mount the switchboard, it has to be good mechanical strength. Everything coming under class 10.2, clear? Next one is degree of protection of enclosure. As I mentioned to you in my first slide, my house also, has to protect from two things. One is dust and rain, and no foreign particles enter into my home. For that, we have a mesh, correct? We play a mesh into window. Why? Because foreign particles shouldn't enter into my home. Same concept, IEC also talks about in degree of protection of enclosure, where it is going to be protected by dust, rain, and foreign particles. Perfect now. Example, if you next question, next 10.4 talk about clearance and prepaid distances. Guys, if, if in a home, I keep 
all the tables chairs room everything congested it's very difficult to walk inside the house same way when switchboard also i need to properly keep all the three characteristics father mother kids in appropriate way with a proper clearance and creepage okay what is clearance and creepage we discuss later but it should have a proper clearance inside the panel so that all these three can perform well means in a house how we live happily same way in the switchboard also these three characters incomer vertical bus bar or horizontal bus bar and feeders has to be properly located so that it has a proper clearance and creepy distances fantastic now next 10.5 in the construction talk about protection against electric shock and integrity of protective circuits the same thing we are also doing for home right we have a short, short circuit protective devices we are using and properly we are running the wire so that there is no short circuit going to happen for home and we are properly inform the electrical people please make proper earthing for my home same way for switchboard also has to be protection against electric shock and integrity of protective circuit means earthing is very 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 important for the switchboard also again for our safe whenever who is living in the home or who is using the switchboard has to be safe enough so that the people shouldn't get electric shock next 10.6 talks about incorporation of switching devices very good even home also we are going to incorporate many switches correct means we can't simply bring from the market and fix it we ensure that we are using properly tested verified switches into my our home same way we are going to use the switching devices maybe father or feeders properly which was already verified and tested going to use in the switchboard next 10.7 talks about internal electrical circuits and connections of course in home also internal circuits properly wired up same way in the switchboard internal electrical circuits and connections must be neat clean safe so that it will be easy to operate without any electrical hazard next one is 10.8 this is terminal for external conductors of course in the home also you have a meter board where the electricity company come and connects a power to your home that is a, that is nothing but incomer to your home same way for my panel also there are many terminals for external conductors maybe i can take a power from the feeder i can connect from the uh, connect the terminal to the incomer there are many terminals for the external conductors wherever we connect the external conductors should have a proper terminals example in a home i want to switch off a fan or geyser or any electrical products has to be properly terminals required right same way you have to ensure in the switchboard also you have provided terminals for the external conductors where you are giving a power to the other unit fantastic right now whatever we are doing in the home same we are going to do in the switchboard 10.2 10.3 10.4 10.5 10.6 10.7 these class numbers refers to constructional part of the iec 61439 for the low voltage switch gear and control gear assemblies nothing but switchboard now the concept is very much clear now it's easy for me to switch over to the iec basic base standard now like different house we construct like a villa maybe two bedroom house single bedroom house a studio depending upon my family size depending upon my requirement switchboard also we are going to develop the same way if somebody ask bigger room bigger house same main switchboard first bigger house is main distribution board we call it as mdb from mdb to next level 
sub main distribution board is called SMDB. Still smaller final distribution board, we call it as FDB. If you go down one more step down distribution board called DBs, which you are directly seen in your home. So switchboard means is a different different types of houses in technical terms. Now we will now we switch over to technical terms. In switchboard also in IEC 61439, there are four types of switchboard normally using. Okay, there are students in the service cabinets, many things for this discussion. I will keep an example of four major categories. One is main distribution board, MDB, sub main distribution board, SMDB, final distribution board, FDB, distribution board, DB. Okay. Now, now we will discuss construction part as I explained to you here. And the construction 10.2, 10.3, 10.4, 10.5, 10.6, 10.7, what it talks. Now we go through each separately. As you see, the product goes, the standard is going changing. You know, for this particular standard, it is started with 60439 series, then it becomes 61439 edition one, then it changes to 61439 one edition two, and IC 61439 edition three also launched last July. Okay, anything changes, but our basis will never change. Now you are very much clear. You never, never forget the house and the three characters I mentioned, father, mother, kids, this never change in our standard. Maybe requirement get added or requirement get deleted by the standard, but basic will never change at all. Let me go to the one by one. Always, whenever you read the standard, you read the standard with the scope. What scope talks about? Based on the scope only, we can derive the what type of product it is. Assemblies, especially IE 61439, talk about low voltage switch gear and control gear assemblies. You see how beautifully it is defined. Low voltage means a low voltage. As per standard, low voltage is 50 to 1000 volts AC or 75 volts to 1500 volt DC. Don't worry about it. Up to 1000 volts AC is a low voltage. Means low voltage switch gear, means switch gear, which has switching gear, control gear, which controls the circuits, both switch gear and control gear assemblies, which are the products which can control and switching the assemblies, which is covered under IC61439 series of standards okay stationary mobile assemblies with or without enclosure also covered under this scope okay assemblies intend to be in connection with generation transmission distribution and conversion of electrical energy consuming equipment covered under this particular switchboard standard now whenever you ask you ask Whenever you ask me, can you explain your family? We say, my father's name is this, my mother's name is this, my kid's name is this, I am in this house, house address is this. Same way, my dear guys, in the switchboard, at least minimum requirements you have to get from the manufacturer or from the designer where we can prepare a test plan. So this is the basic requirement. We don't need much from the designer or the manufacturer to prepare a test plan. What is that? Here is the thing. Basic switchboard means what type of house it is. Means I have mentioned to you is MDB, SMDB, or DB. What is the rating of the switchboard? Example, I'm taking 1000 amps. What is the father rating, incomer rating? Maybe example, 1000 amps. What is the main bus power rating? Maybe 1000 amps. Number of feeders, how many kids you have in this feeder? Means in the, in the, in the switchboard, means Example, I take five feeders means 32, 40, 6300, 400 amps. Then, as I mentioned to you in my earlier slide, what is the short circuit rating you are going to declare for all these components? Maybe you can say there are two types. We'll discuss what is the short circuit later, but normally there are two types of short circuit, ICW, ICC rating. Those things you have to get. 
major major thing is important is my switchboard is indoor application or outdoor application and next one is very very important what is the rated voltage what is the impulse voltage what is the insulation voltage why it is required i'll explain later then what is the ip protection rating you are going to declare and material group and pollution degree what you are going to declare at least this much information at least 9 to 10 information you need to have to complete the test plan now come to the construction part i mentioned to you an xrd talk about resistance to corrosion under strength of materials and parts properties of insulating materials for inserting material thermal stability for insulating material used in the enclosure resistance to abnormal heat and fire due to internal electric effect nothing but the insulating material testing we call it as in short glow wire test and resistance to uv radiation then lifting then mechanical impact then marking then degree of protection clearance and creepage protection against electric shock and integrity of protective circuit incorporation of switching devices internal electrical circuits and terminals for external conductors we quickly glance each one on fast track first one is resistance to corrosion resistance to corrosion there are two types one is severity a severity b basically severity e we normally use for if the switchboard is indoor application if severity b if it is for outdoor application severity a six cycles plus two cycles salt mist eight days two sets of five cycles damp heat plus seven cycles of salt mist 24 days because outdoor is more requirement more stringent okay procedure will discuss later means in corrosion means you have to have a two option severity a for indoor severity b for outdoor you have to specify this is normally salt mist chambers next one is thermal stability of the enclosure basically if the enclosure parts made up of insulating material only like uv windows or any insulating material like grb material you are used for the enclosure that has to go for 168 hours under the 70 degree chamber heating chamber with a recovery of 96 hours means after the test there is no visible crack no traces of the cloth being pressed with a force of 5 newton don't worry about the testing part understand the concepts only okay testing part you can still refer the standard but basically my intention of this seminar is to give a concept how to understand this next one is as i mentioned to you glow wire test again glow wire test there are two parts in assembly applicable enclosures of insulating materials because basically the parts necessary to retain the current carrying parts means where the parts are directly linked with current carrying parts we are going to test with 960 degrees centigrade the enclosure is supporting parts it is 650 degrees centigrade other parts is 850 but normally we are talking about 960 or 650 degrees centigrade which is current carrying parts and supporting parts okay acceptable limit in this is of course you know any flame visible has to extinguish within 30 seconds after withdrawal of the global tip from the sample okay no ignition of tissue paper no scratching of pine wood as per the procedure of the standard but basically this is refers to global test then is uv uv is again applicable only it's outdoor outdoor enclosure and made up of inserting material or synthetic material used has to undergo uv testing otherwise no need of doing uv testing for the metallic enclosure which has doesn't have any impact on uv testing then is lifting very very simple basically the lifting you are using a lifting hook we are going to test the lifting hook capacity can they withstand the lifting load by applying 1.25 percent of the maximum lifting weight example it is 100 kgs we are going to add 125 kgs and lift as for the procedure we explained in the standard then we conclude the lifting hook is suitable for the switchboard for the lifting section without any harmful next is impact mechanical impact this is very very important 
because sometimes you say no mechanical impact rating declared don't do that always mechanical impact rating is very very important to declare at least you can declare ik 08 07 10 anything as per ic 6262 it's like an impact test on the panel enclosure basically for the enclosure how stability the enclosure is next is marking marking is very simple if you are using anything engraved metal labels or nameplate this test is not at all applicable only this applicable where you are using a plastic not covered or a label which is directly pasted on the switchboard has to go for testing made with rubbing marking by hand 15 seconds with a piece of cloth soaked with water then 15 seconds soaked with petroleum spirit again i'm saying to you don't worry about the procedure understand the concepts okay of course legibility or magnification is very very important after the test then is very very important degree of protection again i mentioned to you it is to avoid foreign objects enter into our home or protected from rain protected from dust there are two characteristic one is first numerical and second is second numerical we use iec 60529 as the base standard for ip testing exemption you no need to do exactly the biggest cross section you are allowed to use a representative sample also to cover this particular test at least two section you have to consider for the verification the sample has to be same construction if you are using as a representative one type of each breaker with faces has to be mounted lowers windows whatever there has to be there please note this last six point if fans are fitted in assembly our representative sample also should be running condition don't forget this because if it's a force cooling panel whenever you're doing ip testing you have to switch on the fan and do IP testing. Don't forget this is very, very important point to remember. Normally, you know, what is IP testing? Nothing but like this. The, I said to you, there are two characters, characteristics, numeral, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's nothing but talk about back finger, back hand, tool, wide, something like that. Same way in second numerical is talking about non-protected vertical dripping dripping spray spray means if i spray the water what can be affected splashing water jet power uh, powerful jetting temporary immersion continuous immersion high pressure and temperature water jet depending upon the severity of the water my ip rating you can declare means switchboard declared based on what severity the end user wants it means what severity i'm going to construct my home same way you can develop or design ip for your panel these are some pictures you can see dust chamber and verification next is impulse voltage basically clearance and creepage i already mentioned to you is very very important for the clearance how much clearance i need to keep at home that depending upon the impulse voltage never forget this i am going to use clearance means distance between two conductive parts line of sight creepage means shortest distance along the surface we explained in further picture don't worry because again i'm saying to you the concept you understand first how to measure that clearance in here depending upon what is the switchboard impulse voltage you declared example you declared 8 kv minimum clearance required is 8 mm same way Prepaid distances depending upon the insulation voltage. Hence, it's very, very important what insulation voltage and what pollution degree, what material group. If you are claiming as a 630 volts, then pollution degree 3, material group 3A, minimum 10 mm prepaid distance you have to keep. Don't forget this. Okay. We'll explain in, in, in detail further. Understand the concept. For clearance, you required impulse voltage reference. For creator, you require insulo, insulation voltage reference. Okay, don't forget that. Next is there are two tests under protection against electric shock. Again, I mentioned to you one is by using earth continuity, means continuity by using a mega where we are going to pass a 10 amps DC or AC. 
where we measure from protective circuit to different parts of the assembly where the resistance what we measured not exceed 0.1 ohm why because more than 0.1 ohm it is difficult or dangerous to the person who operate the switchboard hence standard clearly given the resistance should not should not exceed 0.1 ohm between protective circuit and the different parts of the exposed conductive parts we are going to measure with insulation tester this is verification by testing protection against electric shock and integrity of protective circuit class number 10.5 next is verification by testing short circuit there are one is by resistance method by using 10 amps current we have measured the resistance second one is is my protective earth is capable of taking short circuit basically short circuit means pe conductor with adjacent phase we are doing short circuit okay basically if the switchboard manufacturer declared less than 10 kilo amperes you no need to do the testing if it is more than 10 kilo amps we need to do the testing but what is the current we need to choose it is 60% of the three phase short circuit current let me show that in the next slide example are you going to do conditional short circuit you are done at three phase 50k a 450 volts for pe you have to go with 60% of that that is 30k a 240 volts or instead of icc you go with short time withstand current test 50k for 1 second three phase then you are going to do for 30k for 1 second for the pe with adjacent phase basically 60% of the three phase current you have to use for the testing of short circuit finally in car operation of switching devices i already clearly mentioned all the components has to be certified components you have to use so there is no other details required here internal electrical circuits as i mentioned to you during my first slides you have properly used approved cables and wire and connections inside the switchboard to ensure there is no shock hazard again i mentioned to you earlier terminals for external conductors you have to keep proper sockets and plugs at home same way in the switchboard also you have to keep terminals for external conductors suitable to connect the external products to the switchboard please note this 10.6 10.7 10.8 is only by verification hope you enjoyed the concept of the switchboard nothing but our family nothing but my home this is what i am interested to drive in this seminar to understand the concept hope you never forget switchboard because switchboard is your family incomer is your father vertical one horizontal bus bar is your mother hits are your feeders hope the concept is neatly go into your brain you never forget this concept now go to your q and a check further we continue in the next webinar let me go to q and a check what do you understand the switchboard who represent the main bus bar and feeders in our home next question what are the basic construction requirements we need to follow during construction of switchboard dust and rain protection represent which test in iec standard can feeder some of the currents be more than incomer rating a switchboard will be used for outdoor what is this test and severity we need to consider all five questions i already explained let me show the answer for the same who represents main bus bar and feeders in our home of course our mother and kids correct what are the basic construction requirement we need to follow in the switchboard same like our home non corrosive in nature good construction inside that shock free has a short circuit protection protection from heat rain dust for an object built with appropriate approved components and good wearing practices correct dust and rain protection represent which test iec standard degree of protection correct can feeder some of the current is more than incomer rating yes because sometimes some other people also get earning right at home so that you can increase the packet money for kids okay maybe during testing maybe additional test we need to do we'll not discuss now 
a switchboard will be used for outdoor what is the test we need to consider for severity in under corrosion if it is outdoor severity b and ip54 minimum we need to consider if it is for outdoor okay just for quick understand of the things now ul gmbh abu dhabi developed a state of art facility in abu dhabi uae let me play a video of this to show to you what are the facility available here and research and development testing which are widely needed and accepted in the region. The first phase of the UL Middle East Lab has incorporated the principles of Lean Sigma and is laid out in clear zones signifying the class of testing. It offers safety, performance and reliability testing services, training through knowledge transfer for the local economies from UL's global experts, research in electrical safety as well as tailored testing and inspection solutions. The heat zone is the region's and one of the world's largest temperature rise test facility with current capacity up to 20,000 amperes at 50 and 60 hertz and elevated controlled ambient of 70 degrees centigrade in a room of 100 square meters in area at a height of 5 meters. This is fully automated and remotely accessible. The environmental zone offers multiple mechanical tests for ordinary and hazardous location assemblies and environmental tests for extreme corrosion, damp heat, humidity, UV and thermal stability. The dust zone consists of one of the world's largest chambers for ingress protection, testing up to six times IP at a volume of 35 cubic meters. The AquaZone water test, designed to cater to IP for IEC standards, as well as type ratings for NEMA or UL standards. The rotating table can be inclined and bear a load up to four tons. The insulating materials lab zone tests as per the widely accepted IEC Glowwire and UL94 standards. Finally, the high voltage and impulse voltage test capabilities cover a wide range of AC and DC voltage ratings. The lab was formally inaugurated by UL's SVP and President International, Gita Schotz, on October 30, 2016, and dedicated to the region's growth with a commitment of expansion to meet the needs of the region as well as by continuing to elevate the benchmark in safety and quality for local testing and compliance regulations. Um, thank you, Raghu, for the wealth of knowledge that you share with the attendees. At this time, we will answer questions that we receive from our attendees. Um, the first question we have of one of our attendees is that 
um, they were thinking that uh, equating the switchboard design to a family and a house we live is really interesting. Uh, the question is, are there any requirements for the thickness of the enclosure? Raghu, please answer. Yeah, first of all, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Um, uh, one of the attendees needs to clarify the thickness of the enclosure. Are there okay. any requirements? Okay, first of all, good question, appreciate it. Uh, unfortunately, IDC standard not declared or make any uh, room for a uh, minimum thickness to for the enclosure. Why? Because the enclosure is basically important for the mechanical impact and it should be rigid in nature during short circuit. In, in indirectly, the standard verifying the thickness by conducting the testing. Example, if thickness is very less, it will affect in the temperature rise where the enclosure cover or the door will get heated up so that it gets failed. Refers to table six, acceptable external enclosure and covers. Hence, manufacturer has to ensure the thickness will be in line with AC uh, standard to qualify the temperature rise test. Second thing is very, very important during conditional short circuit test. If the thickness is very small, there is chances of opening a door during arc due to, due to, due to I square T and due to huge arc inside. Hence, the thickness and the locking arrangement must be protected properly designed by the manufacturer to test the short circuit test. And third one is mechanical impact test. If the thickness is very small, if I do the mechanical impact test, the enclosure can get bulge and it has make a problem for clearance and creepage. So it's very, very important. No need to mention in the standard, but indirectly by doing this test, manufacturer know what is the thickness has to be maintained in the switchboard. Thank you. Thank you, Raghu. Um, there's another question from an attendee. Uh, what is the requirement for IP testing for indoor and outdoor application? Raghu, please answer. Yeah, basically, uh, minimum, I can say. There is no specific uh, uh, criteria because water is very very important for the outdoor application see indoor anything as per the customer requirement uh, means end user uh, requirement they can declare ip 42 or 43 44 whatever it is. even though some indoor uh, example for the it cabinets even though ip x1 x2 also acceptable or sometimes depending upon the end user application but for the outdoor application minimum ip 54 and above is suits Minimum IP54 must be prepared for outdoor application. Thank you, Raghu. Um, we have one more question from the attendees. Um, what is the total du duration for full certification for switchboard to be completed uh, based on uh, Abi, uh, Abu Dhabi, da Dhabi Lab? Yeah, it's a very good question. Basically, the as I mentioned to you in the presentation, depending upon how much family, how much big is a family. <laughs> so now you understand, my, my, all my viewers have understood this. So depending upon the family size, my construct, my, my testing also get increased. But normally, if you ask me, uh, within seven working days, we can complete all the testing except short circuit at Abu Dhabi lab. Short circuit for one MDB, main distribution board or SMDB, takes two days of time. Roughly around 10 days, we can complete all the testing for one MGB or one switchboard as per IEC 61439-1 and 2. And within another seven working days, we can release our certificates and reports from UL side. Thank you, Raghu. Thank you for the confirmation of the duration for certification and testing. Um, with that, this will be the last question we have time for. Uh, thank you, Raghu, once again for the informative presentation and webinar. And thank you for taking all the time to participate in today's webinar. As we close this program, 
I would like to remind you that a link to the recorded webinar will be sent via email to, do, to all those who registered to attend. Please be reminded there will be a short survey for you participants to fill up so that we can serve you better and seek improvement for our webinars. We hope that you enjoy our webinar and please be reminded that the second webinar for IEC 61439-1 and-2 will be held on 12th of August at the same time from 2 p.m. to 3.15 p.m. GMT plus 8 time zone. Hope you enjoy the webinar and find it insightful. Stay healthy and safe. Uh, Raghu, you have something to add? Yeah, first of all, thanks to all uh, participants. Uh, because of short duration, sometimes I need to speak a little faster than as anticipated. And uh, we UL always available, as you see the screen. Please reaching us for any further questions because this webinar, basically this total series we are covering to teach the basics, concept basically. So hope now you are closing completely and completely you remember house and the concept of the house and the switchboard. We will continue the further webinars, the same concept so that no, our intention of giving this inputs to all viewers will be satisfied. Thank you very much. You can reach us 24 by 7 anytime mentioned in the contact details. Thank you so much, Raghu. Uh, thank you to all the participants, uh, attendees. Uh, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule. Uh, please be reminded again that our second webinar will be on the 12th of August at the same time from 2 p.m. to 3.15 p.m. GMT plus eight hours time zone. Hope you stay safe and healthy. Thank you all. Bye.